that story up. Okay, hello and welcome back to another episode of Boys Gone Wild. I excite excitement doesn't doesn't even begin to describe how I'm feeling right now. Why? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, wanted, okay, I, wanted yeah. Come, I wanted to come in hot, but well, you, I feel like that's don't don't climate. look so shocked. No, because it sounds I'm like filled with excitement. I wanted to bring uh, some oomph straight no, into the pod, yeah, because... and you said why? <laughs> no, because sometimes <laughs> one of us will have something secret planned for the start. No, not at all. No, but no, no. I am buzzing just to no. just to speak to you for two hours. I am I that's am buzz. The, Subscribe yes. to the Patreon. Um, that so I at work. I recently joined a new team. Yeah, there's three um, three of us joined the new team, and recently there was a there was awards like a, a fun cute awards ceremony. Death Squad Six. Is Death Squad. The that's the one. Yeah, that's the team you're at. Yeah, but you can't say that on exactly. live on air. Yeah. Um, but so we got there was an award ceremony across a few different departments. Yes. And there was an award for our team mm-hmm. for um, best best newcomer, and there was a runner up to that award, <laughs> neither of which were me. No so way. I was the. <laughs> <laughs> so there was two two award there was two awards for best newcomer mm. and there was three newcomers. So it was quite stark. It oh, was actually no. quite of an insult. I'm well, like, do you know what? No one won that award really. There's just one. No, loser. no, no. There was a winner and a runner-up. Not really. There, there was, was a, a winner. There was and a, a loser. Up. Let's be real. No, no, no. But yeah. you get a winner, you get second place. But the there truth were, is, there were people who have been good <laughs> and people who have done nothing. It's it's actually highlighting the loser. It really is, isn't it? It's yeah. to the extent where I think, like, maybe... Would, do you reckon they'd have thought of that and gone, why don't we spare Andrew's feelings? No. I well, didn't. it's very similar to when I was in the uh, Jason Manford's comedy competition mm. um, and the semi-final. There was 12 acts in the semi-final. One semi-final, because they had to, they, it was the first time they were doing the competition. So they were still working some stuff out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought we were going to be in the... Blackpool Winter Gardens, which is their classic mm. big venue, but mm. we didn't sell enough tickets. And so honor in, it would have been. As we well. were we we're in the bar area where you kind what? of wait to go in. Well, how big's that? That was maybe I think it was like a scattered, maybe like ninety people scattered around this bar. Right, which is you know all right, but I think it was standing. Bar- no, we sat down. Okay. So, you know there was there were was. You, were you performing on the bar? Uh, we were from the fridge. We were we were performing in a makeshift stage in the corner of of the room where there was bars at the other end. Right. And uh, 12 acts, um, eight finalists were chosen. Um, I did not have a good set, but I did make the final because I was not one of the worst four. Yeah. So what? how they did it at the end yeah. is after 12 acts, they then announced the eight finalists who'd got through. What, one by one? One by one. That's So tough. eight of us walked you might, up. It would have been quicker to say who didn't make it. <laughs> exactly. But you can't. You can't do and that. And then it was... You a can't ca- end a show with the four losers. There was a, it was a car share uh, with three of us who'd oh. gone up. We got really gassed going up. We were getting on, as you often do with these sort of car shares. I think it was like yeah. a four-hour drive up. And then the guy who very kindly, very sweet, very good comedian, actually, who uh, dro- drove us up. Yeah. He was the one driving. He didn't make and it. He didn't make it. No. And he had to drive down. He had to drive us all back. What was it like? Um, I mean, he took it as well as I think you could. I mean, there was still clenched teeth. I would have been a real, I would have been a real Soaker. nasty cunt. I would have sold. It's just, I mean, driving back four hours, driving back two guys well, who made it like in. It's almost like the chauffeur of the people. Yeah, the <laughs> but you're because but it was one of those things where there was no winners. There was four losers. That yeah, was all there was. There, what, none of us won. Did you feel elated? If it's over fifty percent. It's no longer winners, it's losers. That's true, <laughs> it's, isn't you, it? You're, yeah. you're not losing is what you've done. Yeah, mine was 66.6 for a So yeah. what you did was lose and the other yeah, two yeah. did not if lose. If two-third, like if, if, if the normality is to progress, yeah. Yeah. then, you're, that's no how longer, I think we then you're no longer a winner. Yeah, I think maybe we should have, that's how we should choose prime ministers, is that yeah. we have... I'm, li- I'm listening. We should have, I think maybe... What's 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 eight out of twelve percentage wise? You don't need me to answer that. Okay, <laughs> so, don't be silly. Come do on. you want to leave while I work it out? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's the question? I'll do it for you right well, now. Well, I'm just trying to. I'll do it for you right now. Um, eight out of twelve is a percentage. Eight out of ten cats. Okay, so eight out. So let's say eighty percent of the country are chosen. Eight out of twelve is a percentage. Well, should we? Do you want to take your best guess? You've got I would five say seconds of working out. Seventy percent. Eight out of twelve is a percentage. Seventy percent. You're having a fucking laugh. What mate. do you think it is? Seventy-three. Seventy-three percent. All right. So seventy-three percent of the country are chosen as prime minister, and we well, got to find out. I feel this is this is great podcasting. <laughs> eight out of twelve as a percentage. A percentage. Sixty-six point six six seven. Oh, 
So it's goddamn near two thirds. Yeah, it is. Um, I said seventy percent. Yeah, no, um, you won. But uh, yeah, could you do a prime ministerial race where you pick a majority of the country to run it? I what? So the majority of the country. How many? What's the population of? About UK? seventy mil now. Seventy mil. So you want seventy percent of that? Seventy percent to run the country. <laughs> yeah. What's and so, that? Yeah, but then I guess I don't know how you'd was campaign. It so ma- was it so maths heavy at the yeah. start? I don't know how you'd campaign. You'd for be that. starting to get a bill through. Yeah, it's true. And how would you? But who would you be campaigning if the majority of the, if the majority of the population <laughs> are running for prime minister? Who are you really? It doesn't even really who go with what I was saying. For? I was trying to. It doesn't even work. It was. It nonsense. doesn't even it's embellish terrible. what I was talking about, which is where the majority of people win, meaning that it's the loser. But it doesn't really work. I in think a prime it's ministerial. the statement is if it's if it's <laughs> normal if the majority of people go through if it's normal to go then through, you are a loser then there's no such thing as a winner there's only a loser mm-hmm. it's like getting voted off something rather than winning something yeah I, it's I, like I, big sh- brother. I shouldn't have brought brought in the hellscape scenario. do you think you didn't oh yeah first past the post system <laughs> had no reason to be brought up in this conversation no. yeah but this wouldn't be first past the post system this would be a whole new alternative you think that's alternative voting when i come forward with a new st- new way of voting in yeah. a prime minister how, here's this. Here's an idea for you. Seventy percent. Why does, why does the majority of the, of the so, but, so what happens to the people who? Well, it doesn't make what you're saying doesn't make a shred of sense. Well, I guess they're in a really. You'd feel really bad if you're in that thirty percent. Is that the seventy percent of the people are prime minister? And are they just not running the country? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but so they don't have a say. It's an interesting <laughs> idea that the majority of the people run the minority of the people because it's sort of like. Um, communism with a right with a, a specific group well surely the majority who are in charge are just going to disregard the needs of the mini- minority who aren't in charge yeah it's very much like a vote between two wolves and a sheep and the two wolves it, say let's eat the sheep what's the vote who what's the alternative in this system just like Keir Starmer what'd Keir Starmer be so, no 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 but is it like so you're our party mm. you've got on ballot day if, if that's the phrase it's not even ballot a party day. you've got Keir Starmer <laughs> on the ballot you've got Keir Starmer yeah. Rishi Sunak yeah. and two thirds of the country <laughs> picked at random but no well it has to be doesn't it it has to be how about alphabetically <laughs> <laughs> alphabetically but you don't know which way which part. you don't know if it's surname or given name you don't know if it's two thirds where it's the sorry. first third of the alphabet the last third of the alphabet the first two thirds of the absolutely alphabet, yeah, or the or last surname two or first because everyone needs to be at. Risk I'd like you to potential. acknowledge surname or first name. Yeah, or surname Thank or first you. name. Now I feel validated. Yeah, I don't think it's the best idea. I don't think it's a good one. I think it's that definitely one, goes in the maybe look, maybe part. The election, the our politics needs to be shaken up. I definitely don't think what we have right now is working. It's and, how, it would be my, would be my big is how I'd run. Yeah, you know how that was that big campaign for AV voting. AV alternative voting. Remember in yeah, like twenty, yeah. and there was like a, they was had to for they had to print out. I always find it funny with with these kind of like small short term political movements where it's like they've had to get a logo and a graphic design and they have to do a whole. Yeah. You know when they'll just kept being parties around Brexit when there was like a centrist party that collapsed. Do you remember um fucking the Brexit party fucking um. Uh, with um, Chukunuma. Chukunuma. Chuka- it was the Nando's Twelve. Do you the not Nando's remember the Nando's 12? Twelve? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the Nando's yes. Twelve with that iconic what was photo? Their thing? their thing was change? they breaking a change, change, change party? UK, change UK, and they broke away. That in what was he doing at the moment? That was a yeah, terrible cause, move because he was like in leadership. Britain's contention. Obama. That was he the was big in, thing. <laughs> he was in leadership contention. He was like handsome black man. It's yeah, Britain's yeah. Obama. With a decent <laughs> smile. Then he's like he chooses to ch- start his own party. Yeah, he fucked everyone there. Um, and then they had that iconic photo where um, it was a photo at a Nando's where yeah. there was 12 of them sat there yeah. um, just after they broke They're away. Probably still there. Probably. I haven't seen it's any of them. satire for you. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think Chuka. Chuka? Chuka? Chuka. 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 Umana. Chuka Umanu. Yeah. Chuka Umanu. Well, he, yeah, I've not seen him about at all. Um, yeah, potentially. We'll see. I think it needs shaking up. Does it need shaking up like that? Well, we could be a thing, you know, direct democracy. You heard of that? Because it's an idea. Or it'd be that, called two thirds democracy. Yeah, it'll be democracy. Extreme for, democracy for two thirds of the yeah. country. <laughs> I still want to know why. I guess you could bring back slavery in that system. Well, the, the two thirds would have. I think it would be the most oppressive political system we've ever seen. 
And that doesn't that sound doesn't that fill you with almost? It's a certainly sense of different. Awe? It's shaking it up. <laughs> shaking up something doesn't mean it has to be. But it's communism. For the it's communism for two thirds of the country, and it's slavery. So do you think the two thirds third. will be like sharing all the resources between them <laughs> in a utopia? Yeah, we'd be living in a collective. It would divide families because yeah. of the randomised nature of the who the two thirds are. It, well, it's, if it's surname, it wouldn't. But if it's first name, <laughs> it was <laughs> <laughs> neighbours, friends. Yeah, you know. Because I think areas. how I imagine it is a sort of like, yeah, like a commune based uh, utopia where everyone eats what, their Britain? own manure. Yeah. And then that is what a commune based utopia yeah. is. You're eating your own manure. When you say your everyone own manure, let's just let's just dwell on that phrase for a moment. Well, What's I mean, manure? <laughs> what manure is, is that you pooped in a fertilizer yeah. and then you come back in eight months and you go, oh, brilliant. It's perfect. Ready to <laughs> <Right>. eat. <laughs> ready for my munching. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Uh, and then the, and then you'd have that lots of birds tweeting um, utopia mm. and then over Your in the distance utopia over is in fantastic the, it's over birds <laughs> birds tweeting a communal idea and eating your own, eats their own shit <laughs> I suppose that is where we want to get to and then in the distance you'd hear the agonising screams of, of, the, of the one third of the one thirders <laughs> the one thirders <laughs> and they'd be constantly complaining about the the sixty six percenters yeah what well, because we're who hoard all the wealth. I'm imagining we're part of the 66 percenters and we're, we're in this big commune with the fence up, eating our own poo, having the time <laughs> of our lives. And they're on the other side of the fence going, we want to eat our own poo. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I you... mean that's a, would they even want to come into the fence? If they're like, do you know they're eating their own shit in there? <laughs> I'd probably, if I was a one-thirder, I'd be like, yeah. I think I'm all right Yeah, over here. <laughs> Um, Andrew's got new tats. Oh, Andrew's yeah. all tatted up. This happens. Post well, Malone's in the well, building. Whoops. Uh, yeah, young Kerwin. Young, <laughs> young Kerwin <laughs> on the mic. Um, no, uh, annoyingly, what's great they're, about they're good. A, what's great about having a podcast... Can you give them a flat... You're showing me. You're not showing the, the folks at home. What's great about having a podcast is yeah. you get a permanent drawing on your arm yeah. forever. And yeah. then within a few days, there's a poll and discussion about whether it looks like a knob or not. <laughs> it's true. That's great to well, have I mean, I started it. I know. It wasn't, I you know. know. I'm not saying it wasn't a fan-made poll. Exactly. No, <laughs> but it's uh, maybe even worse. <laughs> yeah. They're just like the post of the specific drawing being like knob or not. And then there's yeah. discourse going on on the internet yeah. as to whether there's like, because they changed the design to make it less knob like. To make it less knob like. And good. it does look less knob like. So you got your, yeah, That's they correspond a, with each other. It works there's well. A, there's a similar kind of style to them. This is a man. You were saying that one of them looks like you on the pod. Yeah, well, I just realized that when I sat down here. That yeah. looks like the camera view of me on the podcast. And that one looks like me on the pod. It does. You're very graceful. <laughs> you kind of you tend to glide through things. Um, yeah, no, happy with them. I mean, easy. Uh, it's it's amazing how many of your close friends want it to look shit. I've I want it to look bad. You want it to look bad because they make me laugh. One of, well, they, the they amount I see people I see study it. at it. They just they. I see like the, another one of our friends, Paul, who's getting a lot of mentions on the podcast. But I just see Pablo him looking Delancey. at it, looking up and down. And he's just like he's looking for something, looking yeah. for anything. And he yeah. just goes, "It's a bit like a sperm, mate." <laughs> and like, does it? It does. It looks like a big. It looks like a zoomed in if you took, pile of cum. If you took, yeah, it, do, it does actually look like a man shitting <laughs> over a fence. I didn't see you didn't that. see that either, did you? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like everyone pooping. Yeah. Um, no, but it's funny how many of your, your guy friends want it to be like terrible. Mm. Other than that, it's been pretty smooth sailing. What was the lyric we decided on the Patreon would be the funniest to get? Oh yeah, for me it was um, funny hats, shiny pants. No, but that's not I funny. Mean, you think that's good romance? I don't think it's good. Do you not? Let's, I thought let's you were you were sincerely t talking about funny it. Funny hats, <laughs> shiny pants. I'm in need for some romance. Yeah, that's pretty good. I thought you like you like that. That was like your favorite. It was like. No, no, because I, I... Did you not sense my... Oh, violence? no, I thought you were talking sincerely. That no, you, I'd get it. Yeah. I'd 100% get it. Yeah. But I kind of want it on my chest. Funny funny pat... Oh, funny hat, shiny pants. I'm going to need for some Which is awesome. No Tomorrow, one of the best songs that there is out there. Mm -hmm. um, but that was my one. Did you have a sincere one? I don't think you did. I think it was... Um, I was in the bathroom getting higher than the Empire State. Fun. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, what, what, why don't you do... Um, What's one of those songs that you're obsessed with? What's one of those songs you can't stop singing? I don't know. The the, the national anthem? That's the one. God Save the Queen? Yeah, yeah. I vowed to thee my country, actually. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, it was actually... Would you... The pain was... It was nice pain. It's kind of the sadistic, like, keep doing it. 
like oh, hurt, yeah. hurt me mummy kind of thing so you enjoyed it I definitely enjoyed it so um, do you think people will over egged how painful it would be uh no it depends it's different parts of the body i think this is quite a nice part yeah um but if it was on your scrot yeah i think on the tip of the knob would be difficult <laughs> um i was in i got out of the taxi so i came from this very podcast yeah. left immediately mm. got on a taxi got to own podcast uh, to you and yours and got in our country i then got in the taxi went to cambridge chief i then got out and i was like saw it Saw where the ta- uh, tattoo place was. I was on the other side of the road, so I, was, I had to go and find a crossing because mm. it was a busy road. And as I was going past the crossing, I saw outside the tattoo shop. I was like, that's Richard Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, He's, he is standing outside of the tattoo shop. Yeah. Um, was he short? Yeah. Suited and booted. Yeah. Short. Did he, you, you know, think that's the hamster? I thought immediately, Richard the hamster Hammond. Yeah. Crossed the road. And then I, uh, then I was walking towards the tattoo place and I saw him go in as yeah. I was about to go in. So I was like, okay, this is happening. Mm. And then I was sat on the bench next to Richard Hammond. Did you guys? We didn't have any small talk because no. my tattoo artist was already talking to Elle about stuff. So I couldn't, I was already being seen to basically. Would you have tried to get one in? I would have been like, I would have, my thing would have been, I pretend I don't know who he is. Mm. And then just being like, oh, is this your first tattoo? Or go, I loved your work on Brainiac. Yeah, what's John Tickle like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That would have been That's great. That's a great one. Because everyone's would, talking about Top Gear. No one's talking no about one's talking John about, Tickle. Yeah, John Tickle. When he walked on Custard. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best moments in British TV, full stop. What was it again? Well, I had a song. I yeah. remixed um, Kendrick Lamar's Swimming Pools to yeah. John Tickle. But first explain what oh, happened. It's, it's pretty much it does what it says on the tin. John was Tickle it, walked, what, on a, walked on Custard. What was the... They filled a swimming pool full of custard and John Tickle walked across it. <laughs> yeah, but what was John Tickle trying to prove? That you can walk on Custard. But who was posing? Was it what was the the setup idea in the was? Air? Can you walk on custard? Is that like a classic? Yeah, it's question? interesting. Yeah, I guess so. It's, I think it's the most iconic Brainiac clip. Do you have any like you don't remember anything else other than Ticker walking on custard? I think that's pretty much it. That's the only one that I remember. Yeah, they filled up a whole swimming pool full of custard. In mm-hmm. hindsight, they didn't even need to fill up the whole pool, but they did. And then Tickle just walks across it like it's nothing. Does and it? Then and it's so, so you can back. walk across custard. Yeah. All you right. can absolutely walk across custard. Custard. Mm. It's completely fine. You kind of there's if you have to walk moderately briskly, you can't stand on custard because you you'll sink. Because you'll sink. It's yeah. like quicksand. Quick custard. You'll probably die. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So do it at, with caution. But no, Tickle walked across it like it was nothing, and then walked back and forth like just for fun at the end of it. Um, and then but you, my, you came up with a song. My swimming pools remix was um, uh, Tickle. Oh, Tickle. Why are you only t- something? Why are you only? Gonna take two or three steps. I'm gonna show you how to turn it up a notch. First, you get a swimming pool full of custard, then you walk <laughs> on it. Pool full of custard, then you walk on it. That's as far as I got. Tickle, tickle, why you only tickle, tickle why, why you, you babysitting? Only two or three steps. I'm gonna show you how to turn it up a notch. First, you get a swimming pool, pool full, full of custard, custard then you then walk on, on it. Pool full of custard, then you walk on it. Hold up, tickle. Hold up, yeah, hold up. Custard. Custard. <laughs> or it could be custard. Walk. Custard. <laughs> walk. So that's still in the works, actually. That's yeah. been an ongoing project that I've never found myself back to. But mm. I got in and I was like, well, I guess he is getting a tattoo. Or no, he was with a friend. They were both very uh, suited and booted. So and they're going somewhere. Or do you think that's just... He's quite a formal gent. He is a formal gent. Yeah. I mean, I, I think someone recognised him on the way out and was like, like his stuff, man. Um, but that was as far as it went. So I wasn't sure if he was getting it or if his friend was getting it. Yeah. But then, lo and behold, the tattoo artist walks out and says, uh, Richard. Mm. And went like, Could which one you. of you? Yeah. yeah. Which one of you is Richard? Um, so here's a picture of Richard Hammond getting his tattoo. Mm-hmm. It's not very clear. He's topless. So he's getting it somewhere. Like, you know, somewhere quite serious. On his chest, perhaps. But he mm. was, so he was, I then when I'd finished mine, I came out to a uh, topless Richard Hammond lying on a tattoo. Like Christ. Yeah. It was actually quite biblical. <laughs> now I think about it. I would have given anything to know what he's... I checked his social media and stuff. He didn't post about it. Do you think it was a really fast he car? He had no idea. I think it was just, yeah, Top Gear. <laughs> <laughs> or Custard. Do you think it custard? was a drawing still... of, It's a drawing of John Ticker walking on Custard. Mm. That mean, if, if he was getting a drawing of John Ticker walking on Custard, then I'd, I'd worry about John Ticker's health. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
It, I don't think he'd have long left. Or he's already. But you've been gone. a big John Tickle guy. Mm. That's been a long term. How long have you been like well, openly? How, well, when was your Tickle re- Renaissance? Tickle Mania. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think. To be honest, everyone's jumped on the Tickle bandwagon a little bit. Have they? Yeah. Is he become a cult hero? Yeah, Tickle's a like cult Robin hero. Robin Hood figure. Yeah. A sort of mythic instead folk of, hero. But instead of taking from the rich and give to the poor, he just walks on custard. <laughs> but arguably. Arguably, yeah, yeah. Which is more important. Yeah. I think walking on custard. Oh, but sorry. You, you want an answer? No, I, I, didn't, I, I, don't, I don't really know if I did or not. Um, but no, there was like, there's like, t- like, you know, in the same way that there is for... What's a good example of that? I guess Rick Astley. That yeah, yeah. So it's semi-ironic. Like been memed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a because it's like um, there's been a meme movement. Sure. Nostalgia for Tickle and all his brainiac silliness. When did we find out about his identical twin? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> That was a huge day. That was unbelievable. I'm, I'm not sure it. if that happened on Brainiac. I think there might yeah. have been like seven seasons of Brainiac. We yeah. watched them all. And then on the series seven, he was like, oh yeah, so this is my twin. <laughs> and we, all, dro- like, we exactly. all dropped our cornflakes onto the living room carpet. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? What was it? Was it Brian Tickle or something? Or something hilariously normal? It's but something the hilarious. Yeah. But I it's similar with, um, on a, with our local offy. The, um, yeah. Even though now they look nothing alike. Yeah, now you know. Well, yeah. I, I'm sh- sure listeners of the pod will know that we basically, we have two brothers who run our, our offy and mm. they were never on shift at the same time. So it kept looking, one seemed happy and one seemed sad. Yeah. And it felt like he had like, he had like we just bipolar. Moved in. We just moved in. Yeah. Because we were like, this is an offy we're all going to frequent on a regular basis. Yeah. So we were, you know, trying, you want to make yeah. a good rapport. Yeah. And we go in one time, it would be great. The next yeah. time, it wouldn't go as well. And yeah. we're like, we kept, we kept talking as a four, like how, this guy's hard to gauge. Yeah, he's like, really hard to read. He's hard to gauge. Usually it's like, he's up, sometimes he's, he's down. Up, sometimes yeah. he's down. Yeah. I don't really know where I stand with him. Yeah. And I remember going in, maybe, I reckon three or four months into us living here. Yeah. I remember going in and they were both in there. <laughs> Two of them were in there at the same time. And I just looked at them and went, oh my God, it's a different guy. Yeah. There were two different guys. It's a rare thrill. I remember running back home going, there's yeah. two different guys and called everyone down. I mean, that's one of my dreams is for someone I'm friends with now to find out that there's been two. That's a, just a... But there's been two that's of just me an ulti- time. That's an ultimate reveal. That's a that's a like kill yourself moment. Kill yourself? If Yeah. If Okay. <laughs> if you found out that there was been two of me for the whole time, yeah. you kill yourself. I would kill myself if you played it cool, I think. If you were like apologizing loads and just talking about it. But what as, would my apology be like? Well, being like... I, okay, I'm you, you're me. Why the fuck didn't you tell me that there was two of you? I, it got too awkward to say. And well, I did, but, I couldn't find the right time to say it. Out of, for 15 years or I wanted to tell you a year in. But why have you been using that? Why? What, so which one... At I, what point is it you and what point is it your twin? But you're the same. How do I know it depends. the difference? It depends who, what memory you're talking about. Do we both, do you both live here? Yeah. How? Do well, you share a bed? No, we take turns. So where does the other live when he's not sh- in the bed? He actually lives in East Ham. That's, cr- <laughs> that's not, be- why? That's quite Central far line. away. Central line? Yeah, you can get there in like 15 minutes from East why Ham. Does, it's it- actually, the, it's not the central line, it's actually the, um, district. Circling, the district line. But that's why I live there half the time. So are you twins? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've killed Identical myself. Identical twins. I've just killed myself during that conversation. There's no way you're coming back from that. That's an ender. There's a game yeah, ender. I guess you'd have to kill yourself. Of course you would. It'd be, it'd be an only honourable way out. I'd commit Harry Kiri right then. You commit what? Harry Kiri? Never heard of it. <laughs> Is that like an honourable Japanese death? So much dishonour. Yeah. yeah it's okay. when you, do, you cut your guts out. Yeah. Which is the most honourable way to go out. Is it? I Because, <laughs> then, like, your intestines, I think, are the least honourable organ in your body. Yeah, it just seems like that's, like, a noble death. The most honourable? So, like, if you were going to, like... The kidney. What, kidney infection? No, no, the, what's the most honourable and dishonourable organ in your body? Do you think the kidney's, kidney's the, the honourable gentleman of your inner body? No. I guess you're in, you're, you're large intestines. It's probably your heart, isn't it? Yeah. But your, your, your intestines intestines are mm. the most dishonorable they're so long yeah and they're filled with shit 
They're too. How much? What's the people say? They're like a mile long, and they yeah. can they can fuck off. Yeah, I don't really understand Harry Curry because you're, you're you're slicing open your. You see your what belly. he ate for breakfast. Yeah, that's not nice. A, a throat slit is a and lot more like, dramatic. Shit will cover the floor. <laughs> yeah. That's not that honourable. <laughs> honourable way out, you know, throat cut or gun to the head. Yeah. Or I, th- I still I like a uh, jumping off a massive cliff. I've just realised something ironic. What? Um, trigger warning. Suicide references. It's true. It's like a trigger. Gun. Trigger warning. Mm. It's like. Anyway, sorry. Continue. No, it's true. Um, what did you do last night? Um, oh yes, yesterday was my um, anniversary. It's <laughs> a weird reaction. No, sorry, sorry, I was just laughing. Why are you laughing? What you find it hilarious? No, I was like, laughing at the, the disjointed through, yeah. segue. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, what the intestines are the least honourable part. What did you do, what last, did you do last night? Yeah. yeah, it's got nothing to do with intestines. Yeah. Um, it's my year anniversary. Congrats! Oh wow! We're all really proud of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so there was we were now out. commit Harry Curry. <laughs> <laughs> it has been the- one year. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then shit just falls on the floor. Yeah. So one year. Um, so we went. It's that one year itch to kill yourself. To kill yourself. <laughs> Um, so we we went out we hit the town we went bowling Um, we started early Mm. which meant that Papa Drew got on the old Brusco's yeah and were you a boozy Susie I was a boozy Susie shock horror like uh, (laughs) uh, 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 an alky malky yeah Um, a very drunk Karen a uh, (laughs) drunk a pissed Jeffrey yeah yeah I'm not doing anymore okay but that was that was a bit fun while it lasted didn't want to do it anyway. Good. Um, so yeah, that was yeah. Got on, got on the, got on the sauce. Sloshed it about. Was having fun. Whatever. Had a nice meal, and then he went to see Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap. How mm. long has it been running for? Eighty years or a, something? A long time. Oh, I don't know. It's, I see it about all the time. Yeah. What's it about? Uh, we went to that one because you. Is were, it about mice? There is nothing about mice. Is it similar to Brendan Fraser in the Whale? It's almost identical <laughs> to Brendan Fraser the Whale. <laughs> So I was kind of pissed off that I'd spent the amount of money to go to the theatre when I could have just, just gone seen it in the cinemas. Did you? So do you think Brendan Fraser's the whale? Starring Brendan Fraser. So is, is the mouse trap which has been running for 80 years, would you say that Brendan Fraser's the whale um, was Stop. a rip-off of yeah. Agatha Christie's mouse trap starring Brendan Fraser <coughs> as the whale? Well, yeah, quite scandalously. <laughs> it's quite scandalously so. Well, that's the subtitle of Agatha Christie's mouse trap. What, Brendan is Fraser's the whale? Brendan Fraser starring as, as the, the whale. whale yeah. <laughs> In Agatha Christie's mouse. It's odd that it took them so long to actually make Brendan Fraser's The Whale. Because well, that's really, been the subtitle. And they also for, they, they shortened the title that made it more focused. Because they're like, why the are whale. we calling? Yeah, why are we calling this Agatha Christie's mouse trap when this is clearly a Brendan story of Fraser's. Brendan Fraser as The Whale? It's all very confusing to be honest. <laughs> so, it's a yeah. minefield that I don't even want to get into. How pissed were you during when I found out it was The Whale? <laughs> no, how drunk right, were you yeah. during the mouse trap? How drunk were we during the mouse trap? So the mouse trap is maybe the first in classic who done it. Mm. I have no idea who did it. Really? You don't know, you never found out who no did it. No idea who did it. Is this so how compare uh, this to your your, your your level of drunkenness when James you're watching Bond. James Bond? How how does similar. this compare? Similar. Similar. <laughs> similar. Yeah. Did you get drinks maybe in the more. break? Maybe more. Maybe more cuz we'd been did you get a uh, indulgent theatre drink in the break? Yeah, for fifteen quid, you got. Yeah, it. we bought a bottle of wine, mate. <laughs> you got to. We'd you had. To. Yeah, we had a bottle of wine. We got one before we went in, and like, pour yeah. it and then had it out there. Um, There's something quite fun to being lit in a crowd. There is and there isn't because you <laughs> you kind of also start to be very conscious of being in a crowd and being it's hard in general. To properly, a little bit of a buzz, then you can get really engrossed in a story. Mm. Too much of a buzz it becomes a bit terrifying mm. to be where you are in the... Because you, you've got no freedom of movement. And yeah. there's like middle-aged you men with kids sitting next, like right next to you. So you and realize you can't be completely ratchet. You can't go... You can't go... You have to you, be you very... Can, there's, yeah, there's people around you you can traumatize you at yeah. the flick of the wrist. Well, you can ruin the whole show with yeah. one misplaced shout or <laughs> scream. <laughs> Yeah, and true. that was what I was thinking a lot of the time. I was like, theatre, you take some take some risks. I could st- I, the amount of times I thought I could stand up and ruin this show. Yeah. I didn't. Because you got unwanted thought syndrome. Do you get do you get bad unwanted thought syndrome? At times, not that bad. I have. Yeah, I get really bad. I know. But I just I, I also I've I've heard people quite seriously talk about it as like a disorder. But you're just a racist. And I'm just though. like I'm just feeling like I don't know if I would, you know, talk about it as like a mental health issue. I'm like Oh, it it's depends. just quite a classic thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it depends how frequently it is. I guess. Always, whenever um, a teacher like um, lent down to help me with a 
you wanted Question. to slap her on the ass. I didn't want to. I just thought, what would happen if I, I slapped her in the face of my dick? I genuinely think <laughs> With your dick? Yeah. What do you mean? Or did a giant fart. Like, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. I'm like, can you imagine if I did that? Yeah, or just yeah, said something really... Or I honked her breast. I would always think that. Hong Kong. No, if they were attractive, they were unattractive. It didn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a desire. It was no. It's the. What it was like, be, what's the worst thing? What would be I could the most possibly... outrageous thing I could. And do. it would be a double. It was especially when I was on, on my own with them because mm. I'm like, God, I just I was thinking about them telling everyone. Yeah. yeah. And just how embarrassing and strange. Yeah, no, it'd I have be exactly the same thing. If I went, hee ho, and that no, because a lot of those I often think about when I have those unwanted thoughts. Yeah. The split, like the speed it would do, it mm. would take to do though to act out those thoughts. And the devastation it would cause on my life. That's Those why are, I have a lot of sympathy for Philip Schofield because it was such a split second decision. You know, what? It, uh, it, it was two seconds. He groomed a boy for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that. It was like that, and suddenly and he's like, "What have I done?" Immediately. Oh, uh, what? Seven years in. <laughs> it was like, like no. Oh, <laughs> I acted. I acted in the moment, and I can really feel it. I now. thought that was a thought. I just. I, I was I, compulsive. I, I wasn't thinking for the seven years. <laughs> It just suddenly happened. The entirety of the relationship. So anyway, what would be? What was your? Un, did you? Have, what was your unwanted thought syndrome during the last uh, trap? I could pull my trap. We were on the. Um, <laughs> we were on the top, the balcony, the stalls. Because yeah. my word theatre is expensive. It is. It really it's, is. It's, it's like people. People who like theatre, whatever, they're going like, theatre is dying. Theatre is dying. We need people to go. Bums on seats. I'm no sorry. One that's how they it. sound as well. That's no. a, it was a good impression. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. It has. It has a. There's a, a meager faintness that yeah. doesn't fill you with excitement. We're losing that, uh, like that art, and we should actually really. It's make like you're sure losing your voice. On. It was like you need to go to a doctor. <laughs> Clearly, a you're frail. Doctor. <laughs> no wonder theatre's dying because you, you, you're dying. You're turning into dust as you're speaking to me. We need Everyone to say needs it's to read it. Shakespeare. Yeah. What? And also, sure. stop making plays that are dog shit, and maybe we'll come out. Do you know what I mean? Even plays that aren't dog shit, yeah. like even the price of going to a flipping musical in the West End is disgraceful. What are we talking? We're talking. So that fifty bags. That fifty <laughs> bags of cash. Of cash. <laughs> yeah. Fifty buckets. <laughs> Um, no, so that, a chest of swag to that see. That was the re wicked. like that was a re one of the cheapest ones because everyone uh, everything else that I'd looked at just priced out immediately. Mm. I told you about this Paul Mescal thing. What's he in? What's it? Uh, Streetcar Named Desire. Mm. L loves that play, so I'd, I'd try to get tickets for that a while ago. We sat in a waiting room for an hour, got through, went in, and then it was like two hundred fifty pound a ticket. Went nope, see ya. So you waited an waited hour. for an hour to realize it was two hundred fifty pound a ticket. That was about one hundred fifty quid. It's a lot for two of us for together, but still that I, I'd that's pay a that. One. That would, that, yeah, I'd, still unbelievably expensive yeah. for what it was as well. Because I mean, we, like, we 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 saw Jerusalem, yeah, with Mark Rylance. Um, we saw that about two weeks, uh, two weeks before it closed, and mm. we had to get there at seven yeah, in the yeah, morning. Yeah. Queued yeah. and then went that night and we got fifteen pound tickets because they basically had that thing where they released them. But then you have to be, you have to grovel, you have to, you have yeah. to live like a street urchin to the, get that. The problem, I think, the reason why tickets are so expensive is go, because people go forth. The main, the main people that go to the theatre in London mm. are I've are fifty five year old mm. home counties husband and wife whose kids have just left for university so they have a bit of extra money lying around and they want to make a day of it. Definitely. So they're willing, so all making a day they're willing to spend about 70 quid because how often do we go to London? You know? You're not, they're and also not spending it's... huge amounts going on other stuff. No. Because they very rarely make a day of it. No, because that's their thing. It's yeah. like, that's their like, oh, that's a bit silly and a bit cheeky and a bit of extra fun. Also, when they moved out of London, what they said- They never said, lived in London. Do you not think? Uh, some of them did. Because I some think a lot of what these people say as well is when they justify why they've moved out to London to their friends who's still in London is that they say, look, we barely went out to stuff anyway. And yeah. we, we can go, any, every, anything you want to see, we can just go to London yeah, and just yeah. hop on a it's train. It's only a 45 minute train. And it's they go, town. They, they do it once a year. They, they do it. Yeah. They think, you know, we can pop in and out. They yeah, never go. They never go. Yeah. I think a lot of them have never been to London because it looks everything's so exciting and new mm. and it's like they're magnetized by the size of the buildings sure and therefore they're willing to spend 80 pound mm. on a theater ticket to go and watch aladdin the musical can i tell you <coughs> bringing up the jerusalem tickets this is an interesting moral question which i don't know the answer to but basically you're allowed two tickets each 
okay? Yeah. If you'd queued up and Paddy and Mike had queued an hour and a half before me and BB. So we'd basically cut in. Yeah, and you went straight to where I straight were. went straight to yeah. the, where it was. You and picked. I was basically going to try and get two tickets. Yeah. For me and someone who wasn't there. Yeah. All right. And a guy who was skinny, bald, and looked like he'd start sort of Twitter pylons. Similar to the people... What's the a profile. Twitter pylon? A pylon on Twitter. Oh, twi- oh, sorry, I thought you meant yeah. like a, a pylon made of Twitter. <laughs> 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 what in the world is that? I was, I thought that was like slang that they just completely missed, like a thread or something. But similar to people with right, food waste game, pylons. he looked like one of the guys who who called me out on food waste gate. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. it was. With circular glasses, bald, little ske- shaved head, skinny, meager, 32 Too years Too much old. to say. Yes. Um, and then he was overhearing all these conversations and he'd clearly been there from seven in the morning. Yeah. And he said... What time is it at this point? Just well, how long are you... An hour and a half a.m. Hour nine a.m. So we'd be, there was a three hour thing. We, you'd, we'd, we'd come halfway through and basically he said... But say, you'd come halfway through that. Yeah. yeah. And basically he said, look, you guys haven't been queuing, so... Mike and Paddy got us tickets, but we were just there for social support. Yeah, right. Because it was, fa- which was fair. Yeah, yeah. Because we hadn't queued. What did he say? And then when it came round to us getting tickets, I then thought I'll chance it, and I just was going to get two tickets for me. Yeah. Um, and then he stepped in the way and stopped it. Okay, which is fair because there's a limited amount of tickets, and we hadn't been there as long as yeah. maybe some other people. But he was going to get his oh, ticket. Tickets. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, what, he was going to get what? He w- his his tickets were sorted, so yeah. he was definitely going to get his tickets. Yeah, yeah. He's like, but uh, he's then he stepped off forward a and he's working off a principle. Which I've just I cut, don't I've know. Just, I've just opened a cut on my chin. That's fine. So let me go and get some tissue. Those people are often right. Okay, there's no. It reason, was right. There's no reason. Why and I knew it was right. right. But now they, they, I think, partly they masquerade in mm. the practical sense that. Mm. Saying that they're fighting for the people because if you didn't do, if you didn't cut in, basically get someone tickets, would lose a ticket. You didn't get, yeah, but they're they're saying that they're in the way they're they're masquerading mm. as like Robin Hood mm. of saying that they're gonna stop you doing that because you're stopping other two people. They're not doing that because of that. Mm. They're just it's a principle thing. They're mm. pissed off at the idea that they've waited and someone else doesn't have yeah. to wait. By the way, we were having it's a, vengeful. We were there. Me and BB were there. Mike and Paddy were there as a four for maybe like an, an hour and a half, two hours, and we were having a whale of a time. All right? Yeah, yeah. So we were laughing and chatting. Is he by himself? By himself. Even worse. Livid. Yeah, yeah. Livid the whole time. Do you think he's just pissed off that he didn't have two people to come and meet I him? I think partly, kid? I think there was, you know, so it, it, it was an interesting one because I, I, I really didn't know. I definitely wouldn't have. That's for sure. Oh, 100%. I 100% would not have done that because my ticket was secured. Obviously, if yeah, my ticket yeah, was yeah. at risk and I'd waited there, then I would if have If it was to... on the line of who's going to get it, then you'd but be we like, were right at the front. you can't be doing that. We were right at the front. Well, maybe you don't have enough empathy for the people at the back of the queue. It's true. And it, it was fucking them over, all right? Yeah, yeah, But yeah. it's a big city and you've got to have sharp it's elbows a, to make big... it in this town. Yeah, you're, you're hella right. Yeah. Um, so what happened at the mousetrap? Well, that was kind of it. Like, we just got... Like, we got pitched. Jacked. We got jacked. Yeah. And like... It wasn't, there was no, it wasn't like mic'd up or anything, but yeah. it was in like, so it was, it could, it was hard to hear at times. And it was, it's a, a who done it, as you say, mm. as I say. And it's like, I didn't love it. I thought it was a bit shit for me. Are you a fan of who done it? Yeah. Yeah, you like I am. I love who done it. Yeah. But the thing is, I think I liked it, I liked them a bit too much. Yeah. In terms of that was probably the first one, maybe. Yeah. Where, where did who done it come from? Because in who done like it, you, was... ne- you never hear someone say who done it. Well, why would they? Yeah, it's well. Normally, the kind of accents as well don't lend themselves. Who done it? Yeah, but it's English. It's a. It's an English. It's quite farcy. Who done it? Yeah, who done it? No one says who, who done it. They, no. no, that's what everyone was shouting from the crowd. Who? Ca- everyone goes who done it? Did they? No, of course okay. not. Okay, that would be chaos. But you never that was hear. One of my, you never um, hear intrusive thoughts. Who done it? <laughs> I'll just tell us who done it. <laughs> We've been here for an hour. Tell us who done it. Um, but at the end, because it was. It took a while. It's very slow pacing. And I think because it was one of the first of its mm. kind to do it. Mm. It was the, the I'm not going to say who the killer was mm. because they told us explicitly not to at the end, which I kind of want to like maintain. So don't, we because don't it's, spoil it. it, spoil it, it yeah, if someone sure, want to go sure. see yeah, it. Is, if you know who it is, it's pointless going. Is it the mouse? It's the trap. <laughs> <laughs> Close though. Um, but it was like the most bait. <laughs> It was one where, like, oh, for God's sake, it's that. 
It's yeah. like, oh, it's that person, which would be the obvious one in a way. So the red herring was the... Precisely. <laughs> which is so bait, but it wasn't bait 80 years ago. I was see. like, but it was so slow, and I was genuinely getting frustrated at the end because they would. There was so much build up as to who did it that I didn't care who who did it anymore. Who done it? I just want to just like tell us who done it so we can get out of here. <laughs> and I don't, frankly, I don't care who done it. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't give two flying fucks who done it. So you, that's I the loved key it. thing. People, you, you got to know, you got to care about who done it to keep a who done it. Yeah, interested. But that's it's a like, key part of the genre. Exactly. You can't not care who done it by the end. But when there's so much discussion about who done it. <laughs> You stop caring about who did do it. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good. But because you know the other ones like um, knives out stuff. Yeah, it's like it's not th- th- this because it's the start of who done it, of course. But the knives out, you kind of there's storylines going on a bit, but it's not all centered around who done it. You know what I mean? There's a bit of going in else, and out. But this it. was purely it's like the who slow done it. unraveling of a broader mystery. Yeah. This is like there's one room. And every conversation, it's Cluedo. Is, every conversation is about who done it. Is, is, is it Cluedo? It's basically it is Cluedo. <laughs> it is Cluedo. <laughs> and it's like yeah, it was Colonel Mustard with a candlestick. And it stick. wasn't annoying. Uh, it wasn't funny. No, it wasn't. There were, it, it was there was. It's not bad. Obviously, it was eighty years ago. Whatever it was. But Did you give some um, laughs? I to, went some. To... I went some. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, there was some some funny moments. Yeah, but like there was you, a you lot didn't of... want to be a sour plum. Was that why no, those, yeah. la- those laughs came, or were they genuine no. laughs? There were some genuine. There were some genuine. Because I sometimes give those. I don't, very... I'm not a sour plum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I agree. Yeah. Um, but you don't need to be so worried about how you're coming across as an audience member. That's it's the true. thing. Um, but no, it was very. I'm just very used to that theatre comedy, that's just so big, that I despise often. It's true. It's just like it's not. It's like it's. It's not subtle. It's not in the fun, funny. As, as we said of on life. the podcast, it's, it's like in the hitting someone with the, a saucepan. The which great, actually, I say that that's hilarious. That's the good shit. That's great because actually they miss that. Sorry, because the guy comes in with a big pair of skis, and clearly in the original they would have done like a ducking thing, but they kind of just went like that, and I was like, you've missed a great gag. As we've said, maybe I'm a philistine, but. F- Every time I check in on the theatre, it's normally disappointing. Apart from Jerusalem, which was the best thing I've ever seen. But when it's good, it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's yeah. unbelievable. It's yeah, life yeah. affirming. You can't replicate But them. it's like 200 quid and there's a 6% chance it's shit. Yeah. That is the problem with theatre. It's true. It's, it's a lot of money and there's a really good chance that you won't like it. It's true. And I've come to the conclusion, in general, the only things I want to see are immersive theatre, where it's they build a world and you, you can just rifle through I've the drawers. I've never been to that. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah. They're great. They sound really pretentious, though. But you, it's it's you're just I mean, like you're it's like a anyway. sort of, but it, they sort they are and they're not. But it's just like you're you're wandering around doing your own thing. Yeah, which it's is not, fun. Yeah, it's like you can make of it yeah. what you want, and like it just sounds very um drama school. I get no, it's got a bit of that, but uh, it's almost like that's what theatre can do that other things can't. Like yeah. I want to be in a room with someone when they're just acting for me, and yeah. if I left, they'd still be acting because that's Didn't how. Didn't you do it. one where you made a Facebook page because it yeah. was his birthday the other day, Thomas Vyman. What? Explain. Your guy, your character is called Thomas Vyman. Do you remember? And, yes. School, and so we a... made an immersive theatre piece. Yeah. And we made Sims characters. We made fake Facebook people. Facebook profiles. It was his birthday two days ago. How do you know? It came up on Facebook. Because <laughs> I was friends with him. <laughs> I was going to message you. I forgot to message you. Oh, yeah, congrats. Thomas Vyman. Two... Thomas Vyman. Yeah, two days ago was his birthday. Does that the profile picture? Yeah, of you in the drama school. That's the, crazy. The studio, yeah. But yeah, immersive theatre and farces where grannies fall out fall down in a bathtub or something that's what you want yeah you want a far, like you want a well, granny who they, they've talked about for 20 minutes yeah. and then she comes through the ceiling on a bathtub yeah, yeah. yeah or like it clearly it's clearly a, a fake body that she but she gets up from the rubble <laughs> yeah. like that that's, 10 out of 10 that's what you want a couple of saucepan heads <laughs> hits over the head with the ridiculous sound effects just the yeah. bang yeah well it's a bit like the play that goes wrong isn't it is something I, I'd go and I go and watch. It's quite funny. It does. It does look funny. I like the concept of it as well. It, even though it's still a bit fucking. Yeah, it's always a bit. It's always a bit like. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Shot it elbows. Because you have to be because you're performing for you know hundreds of people. Mm. So um, you got to be big. News of the day, like catch of the day. Uh, obviously, we talked. To, we touched a bit on Philip Schofield um, about you know his about his his grooming. Um, but I think there's been a bit of a development in the Philip Schofield story. I think there has. I Ever think since I've seen 
which I highly recommend if you haven't, Eamon Holmes going on GB News with that Dan Wooten guy. I who's, think he, who's I think a he's a snively little on GB News now, doesn't he, Eamon? Does he? Maybe. I, don't don't quite I haven't seen that. that. But then on TikTok, it was released in 10 parts, the whole thing. And I only seen... 10 parts? Yeah. So oh, I think they released watching. the whole thing. Yeah. I only seen like a couple of parts, but I've had a newfound respect for Eamon Holmes. Why? And Sean, Sean Walsh loves Eamon Holmes. When he did a panel show with him, he said it was amazing. As yeah. actual guy. Um, but Eamon Holmes going off unbelievably about... In a way that I don't think I've seen <coughs> one presenter go off about another presenter ever. Like it's quite yeah, extraordinary. They worked closely together. He was just calling. Do you Philip think he's out. gone against like the presenter's code? Is well, I guess so. I think he's just he's torn up the handbook. I highly recommend you watch this on. I, mean, I don't know who that Dan Wooten guy is because he was I like a sniveling, like a noddling, guy yeah, guy who just was a he, yes man. He, he it. seems like one of those new, new right presenters who so many of them have like yes that holster thing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's not a gun holster. It's just like a. It's, it's the weird, the right wing way of presenting is this strange thing where you agree so vehemently with your guest yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. your role as an interviewer is purely purely to giggle and, and yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, so someone going. someone rants and they're like, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. You know I'm, I'm, trying to be te- I'm trying to be saying this. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like their whole and role. And give no going, time of day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give no time of the day to the guests that come on with opposing no. views. End it early. Um, but Eamon, so what does he what does he say in this? Eamon goes off, basically calls Philip a complete liar. Says he's everyone on that show didn't like does him. He it call was him a, a, a full blown registered nonce, or is it? I don't think he brought up the nonce, but he just yeah. said the lies are endless. You know, he called out. He's talking about the toxic culture of this he, morning. Well, he sort of does, but he's. I'm also like, who fucking cares? <laughs> okay, go on, yeah. <laughs> who fucking? Why are we having? Front page, like this is the second top news story every time on BBC News or whatever in the morning. It's like Eamon Holmes says there's a toxic workplace environment at this morning. Yeah. Who fucking cares? Well, me now, and I don't even watch uh, Date, but now it's, it's celebrity two, drama. Now it's two morning presenters and one's just fucking going off on another one. And they've good they're TV. kind of the big two. You it's know, good TV. Eamon and Phil. Um, but just calling out all his lies for years and years. What's he lied about? Well, he also questioned where is the footage of the Queen's funeral, which is something we've said. I remember saying that, like there was, I, I was sucked into the. Well, if they're filming something, that's fine. Yeah. But where's the, where's the footage? Yeah. And now I think I can see. You know, we made fun in many ways. We turned our nose up as at the Daily Mirror comments talking about Philip Schofield and the new car ad. WeBuyAnyCar.com. Yeah. And I think they were, the way that they, they were passionately, had passionate opinions on not liking Philip Schofield and stuff. And it's, I looked at it Did like they? that seemed trite. No, I think he was being replaced. Oh, by a, by, by say, a person oh, of colour. Yeah, he was being replaced by a black guy and they were pissed off. <laughs> no, we, we were not off the ball oh, on that fair one. enough. We were, we I were swear people it. have really strong views on Phil and Holly, I felt. Going yeah, into it, are. they were getting sick of them, I think. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, I don't. I think they've look. They've been on for ages. You've Twenty got to years. Remember that as well. Yeah. It's time for them. It's time for them to fall, kind of thing. But I think this. I think this is. This is got a lot more to go. I think there's going to be some big revelations. I mean, the, how can you get much bigger than you know Philip Schofield groomed a, a young child? Because like other than that, it's just Eamon Holmes saying. But he's been lying. Toxic. He's been lying for twenty years. Uh, it seems quite similar to the Eleanor sort of scandal because everyone who works there seems to say they didn't like him. Yeah. And that he was just he never. Well, Eamon was calling him out, but on like quite petty levels, Eamon was yeah, saying yeah. that he never looked anyone who worked there in the never eyes. Never says hello any, to yeah. anyone in the corridor. Yeah, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I feel like if he's like if the Queen, the, the Q Gate thing, yeah. the grooming stuff, that all comes from a culture of lying where I think he could get away with it. So if he's been lying for 20 years, God knows. <laughs> yeah. What? what else? Yeah. Also, I wouldn't. But do you think it's, there's going to be. I wouldn't other, wanna, than, other than Phil not saying yeah. hello to a couple of mm. crew members in the corridor. Yeah. You, compare, we've got that on one end of the spectrum. On the other end, we've got him potentially, you know, hardcore insulting someone. What do you, what do you, do you think there's more on that side of the scale? Or well, scale? I was disappointed in Phil when I saw the, the boy in question, because I wouldn't not right, that Choose boy. your words carefully here. <laughs> oh, no, you've already chosen me. <laughs> you it wouldn't. Wasn't my cup of tea. Right. I was expecting a real hunk. 
hunk yeah. of the month. Da- dangerous, but yeah, yeah continue. Um, a hunk. I was expecting. I don't think you ever get any. I get it. I was, I was expecting to see a, a young sweet boy. I'm like, oh well, come on. You don't mean like a hunk. You mean like a a, a prim, a prim yeah. kind of. And I was like, if I was a gay paedophile, yeah, I would look elsewhere. You think for other men? <laughs> um, How about you as a gay paedophile? Me? Yeah. Put yourself in one of the don't, hard. Because one, th- sorry, one thing. One of the hard. A lot of people have been judging Philip Schofield, but don't judge him <laughs> until you've walked a mile in his his boots. Yeah, it, yeah. I don't think we should judge gay paedophiles until we've walked a mile in their gay paedophile shoes. And I have, and I've decided and I you would have. I would. I would have said no. So I would like a different. Broke. Bring me a different boy. So the news broke about Philip Schofield and he went, I'm not going to judge him until I've walked a mile in his shoes. So you groom a young child yeah. up to the age and then eventually have a relationship with them. And well, now I didn't. you can safely say. I did the grooming and then I was like, you know what? Not for me. Right. but Bad but then, investment. But then you didn't work, work, walk a mile in his shoes. We don't have to go through How with can it. Because that's not, 10 miles. You can only walk a mile in <laughs> Philip Schofield's shoes if you rape that boy. <laughs> oh, and that's a fact. No, that's, a, that's going... The extra mile. <laughs> yeah, that's the... A mile is just low-key grooming. Just grooming. Ten miles is the... Is well, yeah, they were in a relationship, weren't they? So are you saying that there was more, there was more love there? Are you trying well, to... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there was, you know, who knows what happened. Yeah. Um, well, it's a bit like I've seen comparisons online, which I can't, you know, you can't logically disagree with. No. Is between with Cheryl Cole and Liam Payne. Because they met, I think on X Factor, when they met, Liam Payne was like 14, 15, mm. maybe 16. Yeah. And Cheryl would have been, what, 35 or something? Looking like a million bucks, we got to be said. That has to be said. And then, what, a few years later, they get in a relationship. You know, not not dissimilar. No, it's not true. Not dissimilar at all. But also, look at what Liam Payne's been like. You know, it's clearly not been a... If you're trying to say that it's had negative effects on him... It's an argument you could definitely make. Yes, you could you know, he's one of the most make. unhinged people I've ever seen. Maybe the most unhinged person. Yeah, I've and seen. that sees like someone who maybe is a victim of grooming. Yeah, who just can't really string a normal sentence together anymore. I'd like to hear more from the the victim of Philip. I that's I'd love for him to come out and say, "By BT Dubs, this is what happened." Because it seem I would maybe see from what I could see from the sides that the actual relationship with Philip Schofield maybe wasn't as traumatic as the outing and public cancellation of Philip Schofield. That's true, yeah. That, to me, because seems like that would be way more traumatising and tarring now, for life. Now he's like front page news. Yeah. Oh, oh he isn't even bleeding that much. Um, yeah, well, I want you want to hear his signs. I don't know. It's too young. It's cre- You can't, I'm sorry, you can't, as a 45-year-old man, meet a 13-year-old boy and then be like, you can't wait a few years. It's just, it's just not acceptable. Mm. You can't make, you can do that. It's legal. That is legal, isn't it's it? It's legal. Yeah. But like you can't be you can't be on nas- like on national you TV can't be waiting. every morning talking about like the best Yorkshire pudding recipes that there are when you're doing that. You can't yeah, that's that's what the rule should be is that we have gotta stop people waiting. That's the problem. Yeah. You just feel like if you have to wait You can't be waiting. You can't be doing you that. You gotta stumble across a legal team. Yeah, and be like, Oh <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'll have a bit of that. <laughs> Even if you're waiting for like a couple of days. You can't be waiting. You can't be waiting. That's that's the real crime here. Um, no but, waiting allowed. Yes. Uh, do you have anything more to give to our, our no. listeners? No. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, we will carry on this conversation on the Patreon. Thank you very much for subscribing and we'll see you next week.